Hey everybody, welcome back to another video, uh, Boozers here. Um, so today we're in Brutal uh, Hydra, and I just wanted to showcase the all new reworked um, Tila. Um, and I was really excited to just finish building her and uh, building her masteries and uh, getting her geared up just for this run. Um, and I mean, I'm super happy. Um, with this team, it's on. It's this is on brutal, and this team mostly was a full auto team. Um, I did have to select some heads, uh, and obviously this team is very weak to the torment head, which we got back to back in this run. Uh, so even though it was full auto, uh, if you run into like torment, uh, you know, bad RNG, then your team's gonna be inconsistent, right? But uh, I was very happy with Tila. Um, I think she has a really strong uh, Hydra kit uh, in general. Uh, I know she's useful in other places for the HP burn, uh, but in Hydra especially, she uh, brings the brings a lot. She brings a lot. So if we go and uh, check out what she's actually about, uh, so she's an orc, Tila. So she was recently re reworked. Uh, previously, she was like one of the worst champions. Uh, I have three of her on this account which is really uh crazy because uh you know, i'm a free to play player so i don't have that many dupes but i have three of her <laughs> um so our a1 it's a it's a steal with a chance to steal again that's pretty useful especially if um you know you start missing your block buffs or the head of wrath um you know somehow doesn't have block buffs on him and then you want to take off some of his buffs or if the Head of Suffering has the Reflect Damage buff and you want to take it off. So this can be uh, very useful. Um, her main her main ability though is actually her two AoEs. Both of them are really strong. I mean, this one places a 100% um, AoE HP burn for two turns and a continuous heal. And on a three turn cooldown. Like just really, really strong. Um, the heal is very good for Hydra. You need some level of sustain. And the HP burn is just good for damage. And then her other uh, AOE, 100% uh, chance to increase the duration of HP burn. And it has 100% chance to place Leech and Hex. So Hex is uh, just a damage, straight damage uh, debuff. Uh, just spreads damage through all the enemies. And then Leech is really important for Hydra because uh, you really need a way to sustain your team. Uh, just because, uh, you know, not everyone has team revivers and... Uh, you know, it's really not everyone will be geared in re regeneration gear, although that is pretty ideal. But uh, leech helps a, a ton, so really, really useful um, uh, skills here. So you have the damage, and then more sustain, and then you have sustain and more damage. So it's a really good uh, kit. Her base stats are very good, good HP, good defense, uh, reasonable speed. Uh, she actually has higher crit damage, which is kind of weird. Uh, but I guess, uh, yeah, you can build her with damage too, 100 crit rate, uh, you can build her like that too. Um, but not necessary, she's just there to do the debuffs and then, uh, yeah, that's how you get the damage out. So I'm just going to go over the team real quick. So this is the team I got, uh, Cardio in the lead. Oops. Sorry. Uh, cardio in the lead. Um, Bivolt. Bivolt's also a very uh, underappreciated champion. I wanted to do a dedicated video on Bivolt, but I uh, haven't had a chance to right now. But So this one's going to be mostly about Tila. We could in include Bivolt as a mini showcase for him. But he's basically a very, very strong provoke option. So I don't actually have that many good provoke champions uh, on some on my one of my accounts and I do have a bivol but the so the bivol is actually really good uh, he can provoke through poison cloud for example um, so yeah he's just a really solid champion he has a a1 provoke chance and then he has a shield and heal uh, he's also a good mischief tank so he's good for resistance builds yeah just a really strong uh, strong champion you don't really hear about him too much but uh, he's a very good uh, provoke champion uh, Cantra is also another champion that's also very, very strong for a provoke option. Uh, her debuffs are uh, very good, uh, especially for Hydra, the speed down, the attack down, the weekend block buffs. 
very very strong just make her fast tanky she's actually has a passive that heals her up so she's actually very hard to kill she has very high base defense as well um i'm running a roll guard for max hp damage and ugo i think with this team you still probably need ugo i mean you can get away without ugo but you can but I think you still probably need Ugo, even though you have Cantro for the block bus. And I think having the two provoke options is pretty strong. Uh, just consistent uh, lockdown of the, the cleansing head. And then you have Tila for damage and more sustainability. Even though Cardio does team heal, um, he is not enough by himself, actually. So you need another source of uh, healing. Either like some kind of like continuous heal or leech or, or burst healing. Uh, cardio is not enough by himself. So uh, let's go through let's go through this video. Just show you guys the run real quick. So it's basically full auto. Uh, I did have to select some heads, um, but for the most part, I just wanted to see if I could do it, like just full auto. Um, and yeah, this, this run was full auto. Ended up being so. Yeah, you see Bivol there lands the uh, the provoke 100% on his AOE. The, the one one turn duration obviously uh he won't have a chance to get back to his aoe so you have to rely on his a1 it helps with cardio's um his uh ally attack so he gets an extra chance uh, you don't really need cardio in this spot you could you know obviously use something else he's kind of there for the cleanse and the heal uh not so much to revive but he's more so for the cleansing and healing not so much for the ally attack or to revive so, I mean, you can put, I don't know, Riho, you could put um, uh, Pytheon, the new fusion. Um, yeah, there's there's going to be some options here. Um, but mainly here, we're just focusing on the, um, like, everybody is just basically a support unit. And then you have Tila and then Rolgar for the damage. Um, yeah, all the other champions don't really do any damage. I mean, Cardio can boost some damage, but uh, he's not going to do too much by himself. So here, we you see all the HP burns going off. Everybody's lit up. Then you see Cantra going off, too. Very easy to load up the debuff bars with Cantra on the board. Yeah, so this is kind of how it goes. I had it on full auto. Uh, you do see me select some heads, uh, especially the trouble ones like Cleansing or the ones that swallow some of the champions or... Uh, devour some of the champions so um yeah i'm gonna let this uh play through and i'll see you guys at the end
All right, so we're nearing the end of the run here. You guys noticed that the Torment Head con uh, was up the whole time every time a new head spawned. The Torment Head gives this team the most problems because we have no way of dealing with it. Um, you can add a Shemail to this to this team, but uh, I mean, it's not going to be as... Uh, it's, you know, it's it's good and bad, right? Like, it's going to be more consistent um, against... It's going to be more consistent against uh, Torment, but it's just going to be, like, less overall damage. And who else are you going to really take out here? Um, I guess you could take out maybe Cantra, but then you'll lose consistency against Provoke. Uh, and Cantra brings a lot, like, speed down, uh, attack down as well, so it's really good for the, um, the Wrath Head. Uh, just more consistent, yeah. Um, so, I mean, here's the run. Uh, you see Tila actually doing insane amounts of damage, more than the Rogue Guard. Even though the Rogue Guard kind of died maybe like 20 turns early, uh, Tila was definitely carrying uh, a lot of the damage output here. Um, Cantra has War Master, Ugo has War Master, Bivold has War Master. And Cardio has War Master. So even though Bivold has the Brimstone, yeah, Bivold was not doing too much damage. Uh, I'm actually kind of surprised that Bivold doesn't do that much damage. Uh, but it could be the build that I have him in. But we'll go over the builds uh, right now. So, I mean, pretty much a full auto run. If we got a little bit lucky on the lack of um, less torment heads, then it could have went a lot longer. The damage per turn was very high to start off, uh, but obviously it'll get much lower after um, after a torment head starts popping up and uh, start giving our team a lot of trouble. Okay, so let's go into what our teams look like. Uh, Tila, I actually have her built in uh, Guardian gear. Uh, I just wanted to take advantage of her high HP. Um, I mean, she's just lost sustain. The Guardian gear here heals herself, and now she provides some more uh, sustain for the rest of the group as well, uh, mitigating. Uh, Mitigating 10% uh, from ally protection. So you don't need guardian gear. You can give her any kind of gear. She's actually pretty easy to, to build up. You just give her HP, speed, and enough accuracy. Uh, her accuracy is a little bit low for Nightmare. But uh, this is brutal right now, so it's totally fine. Um, I also could like roll up some of this gear. Like I don't, I haven't even rolled up her boots. Uh, all her jewelry is not rolled up. I mean, I get an extra 50 accuracy on her banner, so... I'm not worried about the accuracy. Uh, I think this team definitely can can play in Nightmare. Uh, it just needs some RNG to avoid the tor torment, uh, torment head. Uh, so yeah, I think I think Tila is definitely viable for Nightmare. Uh, I'm probably gonna try to put her in a team and then, uh, see how it goes. She's very strong in DPS. Um, and it should probably work really well on my account because this account uh, doesn't have a Geomancer, so her HP burn won't override Geomancer's burn. So yeah, that's my uh, that's my Tila. So make her fast, make her make her good HP. I got a little bit of crit rate on her for do damage, give her some accuracy. Sets don't really matter. You could give her like relentless gear. You could give her broken sets. Give her regen or you go. It's all good. Um, and I guess a little mini showcase for the other provokers. Uh, I got Bivold here. So Bivold has an A1 50% chance to land provoke, which is really important against the um, uh, Head of Decay, the Cleansing Head. Uh, and then he has a 100% provoke with the leech on his um, A2. So he won't be able to cycle back to this fast enough, but I mean, you just save this for when you really need it against the, the cleansing head. Um, and then this one, his shield and heal um, based on damage, kind of like a miscreant monster type of uh, move. It it doesn't work very well for me. Like, I, I it's probably my build. It's not very good, but it, it just doesn't do enough damage. Like, I don't get a really big shield out of it, and yeah. So you could try to build with damage, but I think... 
just too stat hungry, right? Because I haven't built out with uh, resistance because the way his skills work, um, he places a strength in himself when he uses the A2, uh, which means he has one extra buff. Uh, and he does get targeted by the Mischief Head quite a lot. So having the enough accuracy to counter uh, Mischief Head is very important. I do use him in Nightmare. Um, so I do have stats uh, capable of doing Nightmare here. Have a look. Uh, skills all booked up. Brimstone. And his passive is really cool. Uh, basically reduces some, some damage, but it's not going to be that useful here. Masteries, War Master. Uh, I think these are pretty optimal. I looked over uh, his masteries quite a lot, and I think these are pretty optimal. Um, Cantra. I have her in a Relentless. She's super fast. Um, very high defense uh, and enough accuracy to do her stuff. I use her in Nightmare as well, uh, but not my first choice just because I have other other champs to use. Um, she has a really cool um, A2, which is basically she lands a bunch up to three of these six possible uh, debuffs. So it's it, it can be all over the place, but sometimes... Uh, you really, what you really want her is this passive. Her passive is so ridiculous. So she has like survivability on her passive. She has accuracy boosting, and she can land a 75% chance to provoke if they have five or more debuffs. So if you're on the right team, uh, Catra is just gonna lock down the cleansing head all the time. And she helps herself with her tempest, uh, chaos tempest move, right? So she builds the debuffs uh, herself as well. And her A1 is a steal, which is useful. Useful. So overall, a very good champ. Uh, not super strong in terms of overall damage, uh, but I mean, if you throw a brimstone on her, she's gonna be really, really crazy with the multi hits. So yeah, that's my Cantra. She's a really good uh, provoker. If you guys have her, definitely use her. Uh, but yeah, uh, roll guard, uh, relentless. Make him fast. Make him hit fast. Enough crit damage to hit. About 230 is enough. Uh, accuracy is a little bit low, but I don't really focus on the accuracy here. Just a little bit extra, just for just to land something once in a while. Um, yeah, relentless is good. My Ugo uh, is Ugo number two, so it's my second second Ugo. Uh, brutal, hard Ugo. Make him fast, high HP, enough accuracy to do his stuff. Relentless, really good. Refresh is really good just to make sure they always have the um, yeah, block block buffs up when you need it, right? Okay, and the last member was Cardio. Cardio is my arena cardio. He's in immunity. Um, he's fast. He's got some HP. He's got some resistance for arena. Um, but yeah, it's enough for all PvE content. Masteries actually have him in War Master, which is kind of weird because cardio you probably want unshakable and then support for heals. But uh, I like him doing the damage when he um, when he does all his extra attacks. So War Master really helps. Um, and yeah, he's you know, he's a good leader. Uh, the healing's really helpful, and obviously the cleanse is really helpful too. I like having a cleanser on a team. It just uh, makes the runs more consistent. So that's kind of what I'm looking for. Um, yeah, that's, that's, I guess that's it. That's going to be the showcase for, uh, I guess, these three. Tila, uh, Cantra, and Bivol. I mean, all three of them are like kind of not super good champions before Hydra. But during Hydra, especially Tila after her buff, uh, Tila is just really, really good. I mean, I'm going to try to use her in Nightmare uh, in as many teams as I can in different combinations. But, I mean, just based on this, she looks really good. And she has stats to survive in Nightmare, so I definitely will try her out. Uh, Bivol has definitely impressed me as well. Uh, he's super consistent with his Provoke. Uh, you gotta make him a little bit fast though. Relentless is ideal. I originally had one of my Bivols in Relentless, but then I ended up dropping Relentless and building Resistance just because uh, it was uh, having a little bit of a problem with the Mischief, stealing, the, stealing uh, his buffs. And then Cantra. Um, yeah, a quick showcase about Cantra. She's really fun to play with, you know, getting all the random RNGs, uh, debuffs and stuff. And she's just super consistent with the folk, with the, as long as you have the uh, five plus debuffs. And she's actually very hard to kill. She heals herself. Um, and yeah, 
All right, guys, hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, got something useful from it. Um, I missed my plat push last night because um, I forgot to set my defense and it was a bit of a busy weekend. So uh, when I logged on Sunday, I was over a thousand points away and I didn't want to spend any gems getting medals that are kind of uh, irrelevant to me anymore. So I'll uh, aim for my plat push uh, next week. But yeah, hopefully you guys have a good good week i'm gonna have another uh, hydra video uh, coming out uh, pretty pretty soon and i think we're gonna do some some shard stuff so stay tuned for that if you guys like the content make sure you guys like and subscribe um yeah for more future content and i'll see you guys in the next one